live events i think is really fascinating like um i went to once i was in vegas and i think i posted something on instagram and uh the guys at ufc saw i guess i was in vegas they're like do you want to come to ufc headquarters and, and hang out so i end up going and checking out all the stuff that they're doing especially in the graphics department and um yeah it's just pretty pretty fascinating to kind of see like the the amount of stuff that you you build up but then you can repurpose a thousand times but it's just eventually it is where it's more about like real-time triggering everything mm -hmm. to come on screen at certain times but like yeah it's like a lot of after effects and just a lot of just you, as you mentioned before a shitload of alphas uh, but it, yeah. it's pretty it's pretty interesting just to kind of see the the different mediums that we kind of work within because i think a lot of times we think like i said before games tv episodics and film but like there is so many different areas inside of 3d and inside of graphics in general that like you can branch into they're just completely away from um yeah like what we typically classify as like vfx or 3d yeah yeah it's, it's amazing to see the expansion into a lot of these spaces and it's, it's invigorating for me I, I, you know it's like when i started in visual effects i was like okay cool movies tv commercials this is what we're doing right and then so and then like it was funny when we i first got the glimpse of it we had a uh, a commercial for um uh, hololens when they first developed the hololens and we had an early version of that come in and we were helping uh, uh microsoft set up a um you know i think it was just an internal commercial for that but they we got our hands on it and like this that was the first time we were doing like full cg but it was for for a you know something it's like mixed reality and getting to use mixed reality before you know uh it hit the market and stuff and like that was the glimpse of like you know oh that's that's cool maybe it's not just gonna be you know mm -hmm. cg and vfx uh maybe there's there's something else there it's a great space to be in it it's I'm enjoying the sandbox, right? There's there's tons of tons of ideas out there. Where do you see virtual production heading? And I mean, you kind of already mentioned like interacting with characters, which is uh, interesting by itself. But like, where do you see all of this technology in general kind of um, heading a few years from now? Who knows, right? There's <laughs> there's a ton of cool places <laughs> that could go. AR work. That's another place that I think that the that you know we're going to see a lot of leaps and bounds, and and I think it's going to start to tie in with more real world. Uh, experiences, right? Like we're gonna, you know, like because I was thinking about this the other day, the like the idea of AR theater, right? Like because mm -hmm. we had, we I don't know if you saw the thing on on um, it was all over LinkedIn a little while ago where they had a stage performance. They were utilizing LED walls and they kind of changed perspective by like shifting the the engine and then they shifted the wall and things like that. It was very cool, very you know uh, neat little performance that they were doing there. But things like that, like and I, it got me thinking about like you know. Well, maybe there you could have an experience where you have an AR theater where you're, everyone there gets like the Google Glass or like mm -hmm. 3D glasses back in the 70s, right? Let's take it back to that where where you get an a, a um, AR glasses when you enter the theater and you're instead of sitting in there just watching a movie happen, the movie's coming into your space. It's not just 3D because 3D's kind of run its course, right? The 3D movies, it's, it's like beaten that, but uh, like, to death. I would like to see it where you know if we redesign sort of a theatrical space to include AR, right? You can't mm -hmm. just have a normal theater no. seating where you're stacked up on top of each other. You've got to kind of have a more intimate space that opens it up like, you know, uh, um, for M MSG Sphere that's going up in, in Las Vegas right now. You mentioned Las Vegas, uh, you know, mm -hmm. that that type of experience, it, you know, is, is ripe for integrating like AR elements. They're going to, you know, they have this massive screen the 100 times bigger than an IMAX theater that, that's going up and uh, you know LED wall stuff on top of there that you're going to be able to see just like tons and tons of stuff but it's also you know it, it gives you such a giant volume inside of that sphere when you're in there that like why not put AR elements in there and so, I'm sorry if they were working on it uh, I don't know if I if they're not maybe I'm giving them free ideas right now but definitely <laughs> like you know if you're I can see like a, you know your background right now, you've got fish swimming back there. If you're going to MSG Sphere and you're seeing, you know, you have an aquatic experience happening there, why not have a shark come swim through the AR space or whatever? So yeah, I can see like a lot of expansion in the, the MR, AR, uh, you know, the live action, um, you know, broadcast uh, stuff, as well as I think, you know, you'll start to see a shift in, in visual effects uh, pipelines, you know, like integrating the engine to be more and more as a, a regular tool. And I think Andrew mentioned this, uh, Andrew Orloff, when you had him on the podcast a while ago, but the the experience that our clients are having with interacting with this is just, it's next level. They're, they're loving it. Like the, the fact that we can you know, not only just set up a Zoom call where you're directing uh, a, a, an unreal environment with them, 
um, kind of talking to you, but uh, we can, you know, there's also the, you have the ability to set up, um, you know, certain controls and send them to them as a web page, right? So like, if I wanted to say, give them control of like light manipulation or, you know, certain, um, um, mm -hmm. you know, moving things around in the scene and stuff, I can set up a, a website within Unreal uh, and then send them that that portal and then they can pull it up on their laptop or whatever and move lights around and like, it's a very interactive experience. Doing that right them. now, actually. <laughs> yeah. and Because <laughs> we're doing it, that with pixel streaming with Stadia and uh, yes, yeah, you build a wrapper yeah. around it. You can have a web page controlling like you moving uh, through yeah, 3D. Absolutely. Yeah. And even like if you take it to the, the ones that are super tech savvy, you can get into VR and have those tech scouting sessions and things like that. We, you know, I'm finding that that's not as prevalent as I once thought it was. Again, you know, people think things are super complicated. It's not. It's, you know, you get to the top and it's like, oh, wait, everyone's it's still pretty simple, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, it, it, it it affords itself there's a lot of places that you can push uh expansion into and then and it's a i think there it, as it relates to the visual effects pipelines it is going to be uh not very long before it is an everyday tool just like the houdini's and maya's others none of those are going anywhere right they're they're still going to be useful but i it's, think unreal uh, is going to be in that conversation and it's it totally. didn't take me very long to get there and i don't think it's taken anyone uh, anyone else very long either there's very few yeah. holdouts 